to figure out what the difference between confirmation and configuration is. So let me just recharge with that candy corn magic juice. Let's get to it. When we're talking about configuration versus conjugation, one of the biggest things you can look at is the number of double bonds present. So if we only have one double bond, we know right off the bat we are going to be talking about configuration. If we have two double bonds though, we know that we will be talking about conformation. And so now we are going to kind of talk about an easier way to remember it. So if you have a double bond in the middle of two single bonds, so it's like a sandwich with a double bond in it, that is going to be configuration because you're actually looking at the double bond itself and where the groups are pointing. So if you have a single bond sandwich with a double bond in the middle, that is configuration. However, if we have a double bond sandwich, we have conformation because the single bond in the middle is what we're looking at and we're actually looking at where the two double bonds are pointing. Another key is we can call um, the naming a little bit differently. Sorry, I said that kind of weird. Um, in the blooper reel. Another way we can tell the difference is by naming. So we know that the double bond can either be named by E and Z or cis and trans. Um, versus conformation, we have to call them S cis or S trans. That's just how the naming works. So without further ado, let's actually talk about um, the different configurations and conformations. So as far as configuration goes, we can either have the double bond with its substituents so for configuration, we are going to first start by taking the double bond and cutting it in half like so, kind of like we did when we were talking about diastereomers back in chapter 9. So when we cut it in half, we're going to find what our priority group is. And in both of these examples, we have a hydrogen and a CH3. So this group, since it's a carbon group, will take priority over the hydrogen. Same on the other side. And for the second molecule, again, carbon takes precedent over the hydrogen. And now when we look, either these groups will be pointing in the same direction or opposite directions. And so here we can say that they are opposite directions that means we can call this E, or we could have also called it trans. In the second molecule, they're pointing the same direction, so we're going to say Z. And I think of Z as being on the same side because when I learned this, I had a French professor, and he would pronounce it on Z same side. So just think about that next time. And when we're talking about these two, we actually can tell that E will be more stable than Z. And the reason it is, is because of sterics. I told you sterics is always the answer. So if the groups are pointed in opposite directions, they have more space for their substituents to be all up in their space and they don't have anything crashing against it. However, here we have pointing down, pointing down. These two groups are going to clash with one another. So it's less stable. Also, 
we can see that the double bond is in the middle, so we do not have any rotation across this double bond because double bonds are rigid. So we cannot interconvert between the two. And what does this mean for our physical properties? Well, our physical and chemical properties will be different. And again, this is because we cannot interconvert between the two configurations. However, when we talk about conformation, it's a little bit different. So now when we split up the double bond sandwiches, we're going to split the single bond in half. And again, we're going to look at the double bonds. And now we don't have to pick a priority group because we're always looking at the double bonds. So in this case, we have a double bond pointing up and one pointing down. And in the other one, we have two pointing down. So the one on the left will be S trans. And the one on the right will be S cis. And the reason they are named uh, as such is because the S is just a naming convention we use to identify um, conformation. And trans means opposite and cis means same. Again, just like configuration, the one where the groups are trans to one another will be more stable. And the reason for that is because, again, there is less steric repulsion. The big difference between configuration and conformation is now the single bond can rotate. And this means that we can interconvert between the two structures. So we can interconvert between S cis and S trans. And that is pretty much all I have as far as conceptually. Now we're going to look at a couple examples. So when we're looking at this first example, we're going to have to consider both configuration and conformation. And I just want to clear up one thing. Uh, it says diene. And as you may be able to infer, a diene is just a molecule that has two double bonds. Diene. Two alkenes. So in red, I'm going to first figure out the configuration. So let's cut these double bonds in half, right? So one of our substituents is going down and the other is also going down. That means that this first double bond is Z because it is on the same side, Z same side. For the second double bond, we are actually going to have one pointing down and the other pointing up. So this double bond will be E. Now for molecule two, I'm gonna do the same thing. Cut those double bonds in half. And our first one is pointing down, down. That means it is cis, AKA Z for Z same side. And the second one is one up, one down which means it is E. So, so far, we don't know which of these two is more stable because we have the same configuration. So let me erase what I wrote about configuration. And we are going to draw the conformation now. And I will do that in blue. So we are going to find the single bond that is in between two double bonds and highlight it in blue first. And now we cut that in half and we find out what the relationship between the two double bonds is. So on the left, we see that the two double bonds are both pointing to the same side. So this is going to be S cis versus the second molecule. One is pointing down, one is pointing up. They are opposite, so they are S trans. And now between these two, if we're picking the most stable, 
we have to see which one has the least steric hindrance. When we look at configuration, one is Z, one is E, one is Z, one is E, so there's no difference between S cis and S trans. S trans will be our winner because it has less steric repulsion, therefore it is the most stable one as written. Yay. Now for a little bit more of a complicated example, I want you guys to try working this out on your own and then watching my explanation. But we are going to cover a lot of different um, details, if you will. So first and foremost, we're going to actually uh, take a little segue and talk about stability of double bonds. So something that you may either be reviewing from Orga 1 or this may be new to you is that the level of substitution of a double bond gives you different levels of stability. So if we have four different double bonds and we have one that has three hydrogens and one methyl group versus two hydrogens and two methyl groups, one hydrogen, three methyl groups versus four methyl groups. This one is a mono substituted. double bond. And then with that information, we can tell that we will have two substituents means di-substituted, three substituents is tri-substituted, and four substituents is tetra-substituted or fully substituted. And now in blue, I'm going to write the stability. So the least stable would be the mono substituted and the most stable would be the tetra substituted and again <clears throat> i just want to mention that the more substituents we have the more stable we will be but along with that um in dr west's powerpoints and lecture he does mention that there is a difference between the stability of different orientations of substituents. And what I mean by that is in the case of a di-substituted double bond, the stability of this molecule versus this molecule are slightly different, but that's a little bit too nitty gritty for the purposes of this class. Review what he said um, and understand why he says that these um, happen, but it's not too big of a concept that you have to really know. Um, just know that it's better if you have substituents that are spread apart. So this one, will be higher stability when they are on two different carbons rather than when they are on the same carbon. Going back to this question, now we can see that before anything else, we can get rid of some answer choices just based on the stability of the double bond because of substitution. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw all these hydrogens out. And this is just so you guys can see the first time you're doing it, um, why things happen the way they do. You do not have to, probably shouldn't draw out all the hydrogens on the exam, but again, just doing it um, for your sake now. So this double bond is di-substituted, di-substituted, mono-substituted versus di-substituted mono di mono 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 or excuse me di substituted di substituted so first of all we can see that number two number three and number four 
all have mono substituted double bonds. Number four is by far the worst because it has not one, but two mono substituted double bonds. So number four is going to be the least stable. And so now we have to pick between two and three for being the next most unstable because they have, excuse me, they have um, mono substituted double bonds and one di substituted double bond each. So let's go ahead, split the double bond in half, and we can see that one of the substituents goes up, one goes down. So this is E versus up, up. This is going to be Z. So automatically we know that the one that is E will be more stable. Therefore, three is the next least stable. A little bit more stable than that, we have two. In addition, we could have figured this out a little bit because we see that these three are obviously less stable than number one and number five because number one and number five are conjugated because they have one single bond in between the two double bonds versus two, three, and four were not conjugated, they were actually isolated. But it's important that you can understand um, the more in-depth way to figure this out. That's just a helpful hint um, to start you out. Between one and two, we're going, or excuse me, between one and five, we're gonna find out the configuration and the confirmation so we can make a good decision. We have our group pointing up and down. So this one is going to be E, and the other side has up, down, another E. The last one, we have up, up, Z, and again, down, up, we have E. So, uh-oh, already we can tell that the one with two E's is going to be more stable, but let's actually just look at our conformation just in case. So in purple, let's find the single bond that is in between the two double bonds, cut it in half. One double bond points down, one points up. So this is S trans. And on the last one, single bond, one is pointing this way to the left, one is pointing to the right, so this is S trans as well. So your deciding factor is going to be configuration, not conformation. This is EE, EZ, so we know that EE is more stable than EZ. So more stable than two will be five, and the most stable will be one. So just to reiterate, one and five are more stable than two, three, and four because one, they are more conjugated, and two, they are more substituted. Between two, three, and four, we can tell that four was by far the least stable because it's isolated and also it has two monosubstituted double bonds. Between two and three, we were able to tell which is more stable by doing the configuration of the Di substituted double bonds, we found that one of them was E and one of them was Z, and we knew that the E was more stable than the Z conformation. Ta-da! That's all I have for you today.